Hi, my name is Teresa Bulger and I'm a consultant archaeologist working with Rubicon Heritage Services. This is the first in a series of talks about archaeology. The aim is to give you a general idea of what archaeology is, what archaeologists do and why it is necessary. We will mainly be looking at this in the context of construction projects and development control. This talk will focus on defining archaeology and outlining the legal framework for its protection. Archaeology is both the discipline that we practice and the physical remains that are the subject of that discipline. The discipline of archaeology can be described as the study of past societies through an examination of the material remains left behind by our ancestors. These material or physical remains take many forms. Some may be upstanding and visible in the landscape. Others may not. These remains include the physical remains of our ancestors, as well as the objects, tools and artefacts that they used. However, this is not the limit of its diversity. There is an overlap with built heritage and many built heritage sites would also be considered archaeological sites or at least sites of archaeological potential. It is not unusual for a site to be designated as both a recorded monument or RMP and a protected structure. One does not preclude the other. Locations linked to historic events or traditions such as battlefield sites can also be considered as archaeology. So taken overall, archaeology is very inclusive in its scope. So why should we care about this? What makes archaeology important? Archaeology is finite. It is true that archaeology is being created all the time. As we live our lives, we are creating new archaeological remains that may one day enlighten future archaeologists. But the Bronze Age is over. All the physical remains left behind by the people alive then that still survive in the world, whether known or still to be discovered, are all that will ever exist, all that can ever exist. It won't increase or regenerate. If anything, it is steadily eroding just from natural processes alone. Once it's gone, it can't be replaced and we have lost that knowledge and information about our past. In certain contexts, it is the only evidence we have for past events and the story of how our society evolved. The archaeological record stretches right back to the birth of our species. We have a moral and legal responsibility to protect or record this for future generations. The National Monuments Act provide for the protection of monuments and archaeological sites, as well as the regulation of archaeological works. The record of monuments and places, usually referred to as the RMP, is the statutory listing of all archaeological sites that is maintained by the National Monuments Service and established under the Acts. They also allow for the further protection of sites by designating them as national monuments or applying preservation orders to them. The Act governs the issuing of ministerial consents for works to or in the vicinity of a national monument and ministerial directions for approved road developments. All intrusive archaeological works require an excavation licence, which is issued by the National Monument Service under the terms of the Acts as well as prospection licences for geophysical survey and dive licences for underwater archaeological investigations. All archaeological objects or artefacts are considered to be the property of the state under the terms of the National Monuments Act. The National Cultural Institutions Act sets the framework under which the National Museum of Ireland operates. The National Museum advises the National Monument Service on the issuing of licences, consents and directions. It's the repository for all artefacts and issues licenses itself in relation to the altering of archaeological objects for conservation or analysis and their export, if it's necessary to send objects or samples abroad for study or analysis. The Heritage Act established the Heritage Council and defines various aspects of heritage. The Heritage Council provides policy advice for government on heritage issues, as well as being involved in a variety of outreach and community engagement activities. It also oversees a number of grant programmes for heritage. The Planning and Development Act set out controls for proper planning and sustainable development. It allows for the protection of archaeological heritage as an essential part of this, amongst other things. 
Development plans may include objectives for the protection of archaeological heritage and conditions relating to archaeology may be attached to individual planning permissions. We will discuss archaeology in the planning process in more detail in a subsequent talk. Ireland is a member of the EU, so we have to deal with the requirements of EU directives. The directives in relation to environmental impact assessment are a good example of this, as an assessment of the potential impacts to archaeology and cultural heritage are a fundamental part of any EIA. Ireland is a signatory to a number of European conventions. The Valletta Convention provides a policy framework for the protection of archaeological heritage, while the Grenada Convention provides a similar framework for architectural heritage. More recently, the European Landscape Convention promotes the protection, management and planning of landscapes. This includes cultural landscapes as well as natural heritage. Ireland is also a signatory to the UNESCO World Heritage Convention, and we currently have two designated World Heritage Sites, Brunaboyne in County Meath and Skellig Michael off the coast of Kerry. So in this talk, we have outlined what archaeology is, why it is considered important and the legislation protecting it. Please check back again soon for the upcoming talks in this series that will look at archaeology in the planning process, explain archaeological methods and practices, look at risk management for archaeology and construction projects as well as construction contracts, and outline what is involved in post-excavation analysis and why it is a critical part of the archaeological process.